Hey everybody, how's it going? Tin Man here. We've cleaned up the echo cylinder. I'm going to bring you guys right in. This is our turd saw. If you guys remember, and I might cut and put a little, um, a little shot in there. Remember how dirty the cylinder was? Well, we, we cleaned it up. It's, it's a lot better than it was. Uh, I might actually burn the rest of the stuff off, but we'll, uh, we'll do that at a later date. Okay, so we've cleaned up the cylinder. I've uh, done a lot of cleaning in this saw. It's still filthy, but it's good enough for now. Uh, I've been working on it a little bit at a time, guys. If you go back, if you're new here, welcome. If you go back, this is the dirtiest power saw I've ever seen. And uh, I checked with other people I know. I checked with the Iron Horse. And uh, he's never seen one this dirty either. So I, I just thought it was, you know, inexperienced. But no, he's never seen one this bad. Okay, moving forward. This is part two of how to port your power saw, your chainsaw, whatever you want to call it. We've inspected this whole saw. The crank, the bearings, seals, everything checks out. The piston and rings are fine. The cylinder is now de-pine pitched. It's clean. There's... There are some light marks in the cylinder. I'm going to show you guys right now. Um, you can't feel them, okay? You see those little lines in there? Like, right there you go. You guys see? Okay, we will we will scuff this up and clean it up. I can't feel any of the lines, so if you can't feel them, they're usually not a problem. Usually. Okay, so we got all this cleaned up. So in the first part, we checked over the saw. That's the most important basic step when you're porting your power saw check the saw over and make it make sure it's good you don't want to put all that time into a saw that has an air leak or, or a bad crank or you know that's disheartening to spend all that time porting a saw and it blows up on the bench and that could happen if you don't do your diligence okay so what's next tin mountain you say to yourself well we're not even ready to grind yet guys step two we have deleted our base gasket. We decided to do that. This saw has huge um, squish. Squish is the distance between the top of the piston and the bottom of the combustion chamber. This thing had, I can't even remember, I'd have to go back, 46,000 squish. Let's have a look-see in our book here. We have timed this saw and everything's written down. I think it's uh, 43,000 squish, okay? So, now that we've removed the base gasket, we've decided to do a base gasket delete, we have to put a timing wheel back on the saw and we will check the squish again, okay? So, I'm gonna mount the cylinder with no base gasket. Make sure the base gasket is completely removed. Drop my bolts in here. Okay, we're gonna cinch this down. And those of you that hang around here know I broke my T-handle the other day and I haven't been to the store to get one. It's right here. It's completely shattered. Okay, so we're going to tighten this down and uh, I'll get it all snug down. I'm going to pause you guys here in the interest of time. I'll snug this down good and tight. We're going to mount the timing wheel back on this saw and we're going to retime it because when you remove the base gasket, you change the timing because the cylinder is lowered. Okay, I'll hit you guys back up. Okay, the cylinder is snug. Timing wheel. It is a drill chuck. This is the shaft actually out of the drill that I sacrificed to make this. Okay, anti-vibe washer on the back. It keeps the wheel from slipping. You don't need that, but it, do, it does help. The idea is you do not want... You do not want your uh, your timing wheel to slip. Okay. And what we do is, make sure you guys got this. I slide it on the end of here. Get my hand in. Now I have removed the flywheel. That's, uh, that's pretty important. Um, cause usually there's not enough shaft on the end of the crank. Again, guys, I am doing this series slow. I want you guys 
Um, I've had a lot of good correspondence with some of you guys and you're like, I liked your video but you went too fast. So, I'm just using my piston stop just to keep this thing from rotating. And uh, so I'm just, this is, this series is slow. The whole idea behind this is I want to teach you guys basic, basic porting. This is as basic as it can get. Um, you'll see this saw is going to run good. If you want to go more basic than this, you have to build upon these principles. Okay. Now we make sure that this is snug. You guys can see that. I'm just going to move you guys back here just a hair so that you can see. Okay. Make sure I just snug this down a little bit. Now I can see. I look through the spark plug hole, okay, I can see that this thing is at top dead center. See the top of the piston guys? Okay, just eyeball it. Okay, it's about at top dead center. Now what I'll do is, I'll hold the other side of the crank, loosen this off just a, just a smidge. Okay, I'll hold the other side of the crank. I want to index my wheel so it's close to top dead center. Now my pointer is going to be mounted on this screw right here. Okay, this is just a piece of wire. Use whatever works. Uh, you want something that's fairly stiff uh, is what I've learned. Because if it's not stiff, it'll bend and you'll be fighting with it. It'll be easy to adjust, but it'll be hard to It'll be hard to uh, keep in place. Oh yeah, and this bolt hole is is stripped. Okay, I'm going to mount this to here and snug it down. Okay, we got our piston at top dead center. I have the timing wheel loose. Now I'm going to grab a longer bolt here. Okay, I'm going to grab a longer bolt here. And this spacer, okay, we got a piece of wire just with a loop bent in it. Nothing, there's nothing fancy about this, guys, but it works. And you can do this with anything that works to make a pointer. You don't, as long as you can recreate your timing wheels and you are comfortable that you have your wheel zeroed, there is no reason why you can't use what you got. Just make sure, okay, make sure that this stuff won't move. Now, back up the top dead center. I'll bring you guys here. And drop you down. I want you to see the wheel. Back up the top dead center. Okay, I'm holding the crankshaft with this hand again. Now look, I'm going to turn my wheel. Okay, I'm eyeballing the piston. I'm going to turn my wheel so that my pointer lines up with top dead center. For right now. Now this is not zeroed, but we are saving a ton of time by doing that because we know we're close, right? Okay, now I'm going to snug that down pretty good. Okay, so our piston is, you can see it through the hole. And look, here, I'll stick something in there. And you can watch the piston move. Okay, up and down. Okay, look. Piston rises up, down, we're about 10 degrees off, okay, it's close enough though guys, you just want to get it so that it will be close to zero, you don't want it to be 180 degrees out. Here's our piston stop, okay, you, this comes in a ring compressor kit, 
Now this wheel is super wobbly today. Did you guys get the idea? Okay, make sure it's not going to hit your pointer. Now take your piston stop, insert it in there. Okay, so we got our wheel mounted. Everything's good. I actually put the clutch. Okay, our adapter is not cooperating today. So there you guys go. You can see right there. I'm double checking my work and this this drill chuck is fighting us today. So I'm going to put a big old pair of channel locks on this thing. And I'm going to reef it down good and tight. Okay. Be, just be very diligent about what you're doing because, like I said, if your numbers aren't right and you start grinding, um, you're going to get into trouble. This is the number one thing. Okay. We are at top dead center. I just snugged that down with my hand. Okay. Give her a spin. There you go, she's nice and, and smooth now. The wheels got a little bit of run out, but I, I don't find that that creates an issue. Okay. Piston stop, put it in the spark plug hole until it hits the edge of the cylinder bore. Now hold it in a stationary position with your hand, like the, you see guys how I am? Okay. Now watch, what I'm doing right now is I'm zeroing my wheel. Where does the wheel stop? 53 degrees before top dead center, okay? Where does it stop on this side? 71 degrees, okay, after, or sorry, 69 degrees after top that center so we know we're slightly off here I'm gonna put it at about 62 okay and where are we at here we are at 59 62 so how many degrees off are we three degrees I'm gonna put it at 61 okay 60 61 so I'm going to go 60 and a half. Now, sometimes it's a half degree, and that's just the way it is, guys. Be nice if it lined up on an exact degree. Now, with my piston stop in here, I'm going to snug this wheel down just a little bit because the wheel is actually moving. Okay. Now I'm turning that wheel ever so slightly. 61, 61, you guys see what's going on here, 61, so we know that this thing zeroes at 61 degrees, now you can remember that, because here's the beauty, that will not change, as long as you install your piston stop the same way, okay, and there's nothing going on there, this thing will zero at the same distance every time now I find when I'm shooting this there's always a difference in what you see on the camera about a half a degree so you guys are just gonna have to trust me okay I'm gonna try and get this pointer a little bit higher you guys are just gonna have to trust me that I'm uh, not fibbing with you okay 61 you see it there and 61 see and this looks like it's about a half a degree out from what you guys see but that's that's the deal always open and honest on this channel okay cinch that down pretty tight make sure it didn't move it did not move we have a zeroed timing wheel now let's time this thing okay next step guys so we got everything zeroed everything's good let's check the squish first okay and that is Checking the distance between the top of the piston and the bottom of the squish band. Okay, I have my solder. This is this is uh, thin solder. If you have like solder for plumbing, what you can do is hammer it, hit it with a hammer, and it'll thin it out a little bit so you don't have such a hard time uh, spinning the engine over. 
Okay, so take your take your solder, push it in there until it hits the the cylinder wall. Make sure you don't put it through the exhaust port. Okay, turn it over a couple times. Now I can tell you right now that the squish is still quite loose on this. Let's check it together. Okay, let's zero this. What do we have for squish now? 30 thousandths, huh? 29 thousandths, 29.5. I'm happy with that. It could be, it could be tighter for sure. 20,000 would be ideal on the saw this size. Even 25 I'd be okay with. But guys, I said I will not use a lathe on this saw because most of you don't have lathes. Okay, I'm going to write that down in the book. That will be our first measurement. Okay, so now we know our squish. I always start from the top down. So the, the highest port is the exhaust port. I'm going to get you guys set up here. Let's time this exhaust port. I'll show you the easy way to do it. It's quick and easy and, and pretty hard to mess up if you're zeroed. Guys, take a flashlight, any flashlight. Shine it through the spark plug hole. I like to put it on the angle that the spark plug actually screws in on. Okay, so I'm going to get that all set up. I'm going to rig you up right here. I'll do it right now so that you guys can see the exhaust port. Okay, now notice, see the light? When I shine that through there, it's very, very apparent. Okay, you'll see when the exhaust port actually opens right there. See? Okay. First ray of light is how I time them. See that first ray right there? That's when the port I consider it open. Okay. Open, closed. Open, closed. Okay. Hits top dead center. Keeps going around. They always open, most saws, after 100 is, is the number. Okay, most saws, not all saws, but most saws, 99% are going to open. We are at 102 degrees after top dead center. Okay, right here, 102. Okay, now I'm going to reset you guys up and I'm going to call it when it's open and I want you guys to watch the timing wheel. This is your timing wheel. Okay, bottom dead center. Top dead center is right there, okay, TDC. Usually they're going to open around 100, so I'll just, I'll put it around 100. Take your flashlight, okay, shine it through the hole. I will call it when it's open, and you guys can see exactly right there. 100, 1, 2 degrees after, after top dead center. Okay, so there's your exhaust timing. We write it down 102 after top dead center. Okay, now we're going to do the intake and we will do the transfers separately. Here's your intake. You time your intake from the bottom. Okay, when it opens, see how it opens there? Okay, this is done by eye. Uh, some people time them. When they're cracked a bit, some people time them right when they open. Uh, I tend to time them kind of, you know, in the middle. I want to see a little bit of a gap in there. Okay, you guys see the gap? That's when the intake is open. Okay. I'm going to spin it around again, and here's where it closes. Okay. Now, if you have your wheel zeroed, you'll notice something on your timing wheel. It opens and closes at the same period. Does that make sense? If those numbers don't align, usually that means your timing wheel is not zeroed. So another way to check your own work. Okay, open. Well, what do we have right now? We are at 75 before top dead center. Okay, all the way up. Where does it close? Right about there. We'll time it in the same place, 75 after top dead center i'm going to show you guys i'm going to hold you real steady here 
Okay. I'm going to call it. Okay. Bottom dead center. I'm looking through the port with my eye. Bottom dead center. Open right there. Keep going. Goes up, top dead center, pistons coming down. And it's closed. Now notice. Okay guys, look. Closed. Keep going around. Hopefully these camera shots are steady enough that you guys can see. Okay, see it open right there. 75 degrees. Okay, now let's close it. Sorry, I bumped it. Let's go back and look. Okay, it closes right there. I keep bumping it guys, 75 degrees, okay? So again, we have our numbers here. Put the autofocus back on, sorry, it's my camera mount. Intake. Now I top dead center, okay? You can time it after bottom dead center or before top dead center. I don't know why I do it this way guys, I've always done it that way, okay? Now we have to do our transfer separately I'm going to show you guys a quick and easy way to do that. Then we'll talk about these numbers. And this will be part two. Okay, now one nice thing about a power saw like this is our pointer, okay, our timing indicator is not attached to the cylinder, which is good. Uh, home lights, stuff like that, um, even the Max, I'm finding I can't find a good, reliable place to attach my pointer, which means. Every time I want to time it again, I have to, I have to re-zero it. So every time you take the cylinder off, it's attached to the cylinder. You got to re-zero it every time guys. So one of the reasons why those kind of builds take a lot more time for me is because I have to re-zero it every time I do this. Now, what am I doing right now? Well, I already have my cylinder time from last time, right guys? Cause we wrote everything down now. What I'm seeing right now from the last timing to this timing is the numbers are pretty much the same, okay? So I can assume that my transfer timing is the same, but never assume anything, right? So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna show you guys, I, I get asked this all the time. How do you know where the transfer's open? You can't really see them and you bumble around in there. I'll show you guys. So we know that the transfers in this case open at 122 degrees after top dead center. I'm gonna put my piston, I'm gonna move you guys forward here because if you guys can't see, there's no point. Okay, look at my piston guys, okay? My piston is at bottom dead center. I'm gonna take a ring now, okay guys? Take one of your rings. You guys will like this. This is simple stuff and you will not. You're going to use your rings quite a bit in this build. This is also a good chance to look at your ring gap, which in this saw is almost negatory. Okay. Take your rings, put a ring in there. Now this is at bottom dead center. Take your cylinder and slide it back down. Now me for, for, purposes of this film, I am going to hold this with my hand. You guys should probably bolt it down to make sure everything is 100% legit. Now, what am I going to do? Well, I know, okay, I know that my transfer is open at 122 after top dead center, right? Well, how do I get there without doing a full rotation now? Because we're at bottom dead center. I'm going to put my hand here. I'm going to turn. It backwards, okay, 122. Now I'm gonna go back to bottom dead center. Now look guys, what do we have here? Let me bring my flashlight. What do we have here? The ring stopped exactly at the tops of the transfers. Does that make sense guys? See that? 
both sides. Now this is a good time to see if your transfers are even. Sometimes they are not, especially on aftermarket cylinders. You'll have, you'll have one side that's higher than the other. Okay, that's how you check your transfer timing. Eyeball it by looking through the exhaust port. You can see your transfers through the exhaust port, guys, okay? Okay, you shine your flashlight in the exhaust port and, or through here, okay? And you can look through and after your exhaust port opens, you'll see the light in there. Eyeball approximately where your transfers open. Then double check it with your ring. Okay, so these open at 122. We eyeballed it at 122. Now I do this a lot, guys, so I can I can eyeball these kinds of things. But for for you guys when you're starting, I want you to I want you to just go through the motions. Anything that you don't find that you need to do, don't do it. I time everything and I write everything down. Okay. Now we're gonna go into the fancy notebook and let's look at these numbers. My timing numbers are slightly different with no base gasket. Um, let's have a look at this, guys. Okay, I'll move you guys in here. Okay. We have the same, our squish was 43 thousandths. It is now, we'll, we'll call it 30 thousandths. So that base gasket was probably 15 thousandths. It's two thousandths compressed. So we remove 13 thousandths, okay? That's what's going on there. Our old exhaust number, our old exhaust number was, where is it here? 102, okay? Our new exhaust number is 102. I timed the intake last time at 77, okay? 77 before top dead center. I now have 75. Well, those numbers don't jive with each other. I'm going to go with the numbers we just got here because I really took my time. Okay. So we're at 75. My transfers are still at 122. Okay. So we have a 20 degree blowdown. That is the separation from here. 20 degrees after in the stroke, our transfers opened. Okay, guys. Most important thing is this, write everything down and get your data. Okay, so this is step two. In step three, we're gonna go over what does all of this mean and what are we gonna do, okay? Okay guys, that was part two of this series. I, like I said, I am breaking it down as into minute little bits. We are gonna ground, grind the cylinder in bits and pieces, okay? I'm going to do each port at a time, I think, guys, okay? I want to break this down. I want to show you guys some basic stuff. This is not high-level crazy porting. Um, you have to learn this and do a lot of saws like this before I would even recommend attempting some of the crazy stuff that you see us do. Um, you know, uh, I mentioned that home light. That's the number one saw I get asked about. What are the timing numbers? What did you do to it? That kind of stuff, guys, that is absolute, like, you got to be ready to pop the saw every time you fire up a new build like that. Because that thing is extreme, and I did a lot of work to that saw. Um, not saying you can't do it. You can. But you got to get past this stuff. And you know what? You're going to find this stuff. It takes 1 20th of the time, and you get good power. This saw is going to run, I guarantee it, okay? If it doesn't, I'll be shocked. Okay, guys, so that's part two. Please use a timing wheel and time your power saws, guys. And I, I'm not knocking anybody that doesn't. I know guys that don't use a timing wheel. I'm good with that. My problem is this is 100% recreatable every time. It doesn't matter what your starting numbers are with your cylinder because you timed it and you know, oh, my squish is more or my exhaust port opens later or earlier. You know all that stuff. The, the key is, guys, is that in theory and realistically in practice, I can build this saw. If I like this build, I can build this saw 100 times in a row and they should run about the same. Some saws are going to be monsters just from the get-go. But they should be, there should be 
uh, an area in the middle, they should all run like that. You guys get what I'm saying? That's why you use the timing wheel. You can recreate your results and you can go back in a year or two and go, what were the numbers on that saw? If you only build one saw, that's fine. But what I find guys is you're going to start porting and you're going to get addicted to it because you're not going to want to run stock saws anymore. You're going to fire them up, put them in the wood and say, this thing doesn't have any power. And, and trust me, that's what happens. You start running ported saws, it's pretty hard to go back. So, um, please time your saws guys. That's all I'm going to say. I don't want to start an argument or anything like that. Uh, the key to success is repetition and measuring and with this system guys, you can have success. That doesn't mean you're not going to wreck cylinders and that doesn't mean you're not going to have the odd saw that does something weird on you. It just means that you have taken away 90, the, the probability that you grind the exhaust too high or the intake too low. Okay? This is how you make power, guys, and I, I'm telling you that reliable power starts and ends with a timing wheel. And I will, I will say it again and again. And uh, this way, I know what the numbers are, guys. And what am I doing now? I'm comparing this saw with a 266. And again, I know what a 266 times at because it's in my book. Let's see, 266. Here, here's the last 266 I did. No base gasket, exhaust 104. So the exhaust on a stock 266 opens two degrees after this. My blowdown is 20 degrees, exactly like this saw. My intake is 72 degrees. This one is 75. So this one has a higher exhaust roof, the same blowdown, and a little more intake. Here's the funny thing, guys, though. I don't think this is stronger than a stock 266. Weird. Don't know why, but that's the truth, guys. So um, we can compare it to a 365 Special with no base gasket. That opens at 101, so higher exhaust roof than this. The intake is 72. Weird. Same intake as a 266. You're going to notice with certain brands, they use similar timing numbers on most of their saws. But what you can get away with is different on each saw. So that's where keep your notes and grind a little versus grinding more. Okay. My blowdown, my blowdown on a stock 365 is 20 degrees. You guys see what's going on here. Okay. So Take notes, write it down, time it three or four times, make sure it's zeroed and make sure you got the right numbers and you will succeed guys. Um, I'm going to stop rambling here. I hope you enjoyed this series. Uh, I enjoy making this stuff for you guys. It's a lot of work to get the camera shots and that, but I like it. Um, putting in the time to do this stuff, the finished product when I, when I edit it and put it together, I'm like, yeah, like I'm trying to make things. I'm trying to make videos on YouTube that I have never seen or that I would like to see. Um, and just because I've never seen it doesn't mean it's not out there. But uh, I like to do my own thing. And, uh, you know, I watch some other channels, but I don't watch many chainsaw channels. I just want to go on my own and do my own thing. So I appreciate you guys being here. Part two. I don't know how many parts are going to be in this series, guys. It may be six, seven, eight. Don't skip any because everyone is important. Okay, grinding is like step five or step four, and, I, and I'm serious, guys. Um, I get a lot of emails where I'm going to grind my saw, and it's like, what are the timing numbers? And then a week later, I get another email, yeah, I already ground it. doesn't run very good, <laughs> which is understandable. You get super excited, and that's, that's good, okay? I want you guys to be excited, but don't go too far because, again... If you grind any one of these ports too wide or too high or too low, you're going to get into trouble. And you're talking sometimes 20 thousandths of an inch is the difference between a nasty power saw and one that doesn't make power. Okay? Anyhow, I'll flap my gums long enough. As always, thanks for watching. Take her easy. See you guys later.